Hello, everybody. Welcome to our latest webinar, Approximately Three Essential Discus Drills. We've got Cody Ferk and Kip Gasper back. You may remember uh, they were with us last March, breaking down some great rotational shot put technique. So I asked them to come back and focus on the discus this time. They're going to show us some, some really useful drills. Um, I'm hoping this is something that can keep everybody's spirits up in this you know, difficult time for our sport. So, you know, hopefully we're just going to have a great interlude here together. Feel free to type in questions and I will make sure um, to pose them to the gents. So I'm Dan McQuaid. I coach in, and work at Wheat North High School in the Chicago suburbs. Roger Einbecker, whose voice you may hear as well, and you may hear his yappy dogs in the background. If so, feel free to be embarrassed for him. Um, he and I started this couple of three years ago and, you know, we're just, it's just about sharing knowledge about the sport and getting people together who love the sport to kick around some ideas. So that's what we're up to today. And again, if you have a question, type it in. Hey, um, just want to give a shout out to Rob Lasorza at MF Athletic, Everything Track and Field. Um, he is a great, great friend to the throwing events. And if you need any equipment, really for any event, you can get a hold of Rob. He'll give you a great deal. And, he, and again, he's just, he's just the best. He's a treasure in our sport. Um, the boys, Kip and Cody, are going to show you uh, some drills with a, uh, one of Rob's best products, uh, a squishy throwing ball. So if you're looking to pick some of those up after you watch this presentation, he's the guy to get a hold of. Um, Roger and I put together this whole McThrows.com deal. We got a website, to try to blog and about meets and interviews with throwers and things like that. So check us out. We're on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Instagram, Instagram it's under my name, DJ Daniel Joseph McQuaid. In a second, I'm going to turn you over to these gents. Kip Gasper, Cody Ferk at Deerfield High School in Illinois, suburbs of Illinois. They're running a great, great throws program over there. That's them flanking the 2019 Boys State Champion in Illinois uh, in the shot put. And even in addition to him, they've cranked out a bunch of great throws. There's Kip and his, some of his background. Cody's shy. He doesn't like his picture posted. But here's some of his uh, accomplishments as well. But you'll see from the videos and this presentation they're about to put on, these guys do a fantastic job of teaching technique. So gentlemen, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you guys can share yours. And then let's start talking about some discus drills. All right, here we go. <clears throat> so the first uh, drill we got to go through is uh, full spins with preferably a pole vault pole or a PVC pipe, something that's like really long um, that can kind of uh, mimic holding a discus back and, and resist kind of uh, your torso from moving in different spots. Um, so I'll, we'll just play it a couple times. I got a couple different athletes uh, to demonstrate. This is actually from two summers ago. Here's Sam Leokomovich going through a couple spins. Here's Henry Boudreau going through a couple spins. He's doing a little bit of a variation where he's trying to get a little bit extra uh, zero support and get the left foot down a little bit faster, but regardless, it's still a full spin. And then uh, here's our current thrower, Nick Wolf, going through some full spins with that pole vault pull. Um, so that's the drill. It's literally just doing a full spin with something um, long on your back you know you could still do it with like a broom um, or anything smaller but the the longer the pull if you you know you got a uh, pull vault coach who won't get upset at you for using like a broken um pull that would be the, the best case scenario um and then now we'll kind of like go through some things that we kind of like uh, look for or like why we do the drill um and i think one of the biggest things would be for um, balance purposes, because you know when you put that pole vault pole on your back, you're not going to be 
Um, it, you know, it's not like doing anything else. It's not, it's different than holding the shot. It's different than holding the disc. Um, so you, you kind of have to be aware of where your body is in the space. Yeah, another thing it does is that length exaggerates any flaws in what you're doing um, so that things that we see when the kids are in the ring and may give them cues for, they actually can feel it and they can see it in each other. So it's a, it's a great teaching tool uh, in that they can discover what we see. That's why, that's why a pole vault pole would be better than a broom handle or a PVC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that'll uh, expose something that they might be doing wrong is it, it kind of like the goal. Um, and, like, and you know, okay, like one thing is when you know they land in the power position, um, and you're trying to teach them to keep the the disc back. When you have that pole and you're trying to hold that pole back, it wants to come around, so they're feeling. The moment that we're talking about in a way I think that doesn't always come through when we're just pointing out to them on video and technique they can feel what we're talking about yeah so like when you watch Nick here he goes through it and he, he just the pull throws him wide open power but then what we always like him to do is self-correct to turn back those shoulders so the finished position is where the shoulders are back in power here so watch it again go through that pull open you up, but recorrect. You want to keep those shoulders back for a brief moment, um, so that you know during a full spin that you don't kind of let that happen. We want we want there to be a we don't want it to really be a pause. We want it to be more like a hold, um, where your your feet are still turning in the full spin, um, but you're you're kind of like holding your upper body back for a moment, so that in a full spin with throwing your lower body would turn through uh, while the upper body holds back and then the legs will finish in the throw first. Kind of like in like a clean air snatch, you wanna uh, use your legs right before you're about to use your upper body. Um, so that's one of the things that we look for. Um, and then you, Nick did the best job of kind of like holding the upper body back. Sam didn't really self-correct here. Uh, and maybe I cut the video short, but I'd like him to turn his shoulders back um, to fix the finish position and then same kind of thing with Henry he finishes he self-corrects though pretty good um, so that's one thing that we look for another thing is you know you don't really want the pole to be tipping all over the place you know you want it to be level for the most part especially at the back of the ring so you'll notice here with Sam that pole is like just as parallel to the ground as you could probably get it now when you get into like the um, half turn power position you're probably going to have some kind of tilt with like the orbit of where the disc is so you see here it's kind of angled like that and then ideally when you turn through and would finish a throw that's um, gonna have the the disc uh, finish back in that position which um, maybe we'll talk about a little bit later but uh, that's the goal is there's like kind of like a high point with the disc back up in here, um, a low point over here so that when he does turn through the finish, it'd finish at a high point. Um, but back to the, uh, the pole being level, that's kind of the goal because, you know, you get some kids that'll turn out of the back of the ring and this will be tilted up this way or sometimes tilted down the other way. Um, and we, we want to keep it, you know, as simple as possible, as level as possible. Um, so that's another thing that we'll look for. Um, while the kids are doing this. Cause you know, you tilt too much and you, you'd almost get that pull to hit the ground. Another nice thing about it is on the one at the, at the beginning, the turn in the back, it keeps kids from throwing that left arm out in front of their left hip and getting that left shoulder going in to the ring too soon. Uh, it's really not our point of emphasis with this, but it is a nice additional benefit to, to the drill. Yeah, that's a good point. Like Henry, he kind of had a problem with throwing that left arm open, but you know, if, if the arms are on the pole, you can't really open it quite as much as you might want to. At the back of the uh, ring there, guys, yeah. where they're coming around the corner, yeah, and the pole's level. If a, if a kid's having trouble with their left shoulder dipping, right, 
that's kind of a common fault where kids pull the left shoulder down. Mm -hmm. um, if they're doing that in this drill, what's, what correction would you make? Um, like, is it enough to just say, keep the dang thing level? So I think I know what you're talking about. And I think it has to do with possibly them sitting back and, um, and leaning in, which mm -hmm. I think this drill would just kind of not, not automatically, but bring them to the awareness of, of how they're tipping and maybe sitting back. And maybe they just need to do some three sixties with this instead of some full spins first mm -hmm. um, to make sure they're not sitting backwards. Cause usually if they're, if I'm understanding how you're describing the pull would be not maybe that much tilted, but tilted like that. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So if they're going to be tilted like this, then uh, most likely I would think that they wouldn't probably be able to do a 360 because they're probably going to be falling in that direction and maybe mm -hmm. landing, you know, premature of that 360 degree position. Um, so I'd probably have them do that if they're, uh, if they're tilted like that. And you like 360s with the pole as well. Yeah, yeah. If, if possible, do them with the pole. Because um, it'll, you know, same thing. It'll bring awareness to uh, their, them being level and then that tipping. Um, because, you know, when you have that pole and you are tipping, I, I think it'll, the pole helps self-correct that um, than, than, rather, than if you didn't have the pole. Just a good way for the kids to feel it if yeah. they're off balance. Yeah. And one way we use this drill too is if, if we see the fault that you just mentioned, Dan, um, they're doing it in the ring with their throws. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll bring them out of the ring. We'll just say, go get the pole and do some of these, either 360s or fulls, and just get the feel back of keeping your left arm in and level and not sitting back. It's a little bit harder to sit back with this pole on your back mm -hmm. um, and then bring them back to the ring. So it's a nice drill in that once they get the feel of doing it with the pole on them, you can, and if they go get a bad habit going again in the ring, send them by themselves, they can get the pole out, they can do this drill, and then they can come back. And it really works to help them uh, get back on track quickly in the ring. Hey, could you guys full screen that for a minute and give us a look at that drill? Is that possible? Yeah, good point. We'll go through each guy a second. Nice. All right, so what do you want? We've got more questions or you want to go to the next drill or? Let's go ahead and move on to that next drill. And again, if anybody has a question, just type it in and we'll get it to these gents. All right, I'm gonna to try to go more uh, full screen here. So next drill is called the Nickerson. And what we want is first to have a power ball. Let me go slow-mo so you can see. So we got a power ball, um, maybe something they can hold on to. This is, you know, our preferred uh, kind of like tool that we use for uh, th uh, not throwing but doing drills. Um, so they're, what they're going to do is they're going to do a full spin, but they're actually going to hold the power ball in their left hand, go through the full spin. Hold on, let me go slow-mo. All right, finish the throw. Now they're going to switch hands so it'll go in the right hand and then go backwards through the full spin. So there's Sam doing it. It'll be a video of Henry doing it. What's the weight on that ball? Um, I think 
some of them that we've got will probably be like th as light as three pounds. I think I've got some two pounds for girls, so it's like a kind of like a one K. And mm -hmm. then uh, I don't think we try to make it so that they're heavier than five pounds because, you know, the guy's discs is what, like around three and a half pounds. Right. Yeah. So probably no more than five pounds. And, you know, there's different places, a couple of different places you can get these. Um, and I think MF Athletics got some. Yeah, we, uh, our original set we bought from MF, and we bought the ones where you fill them with sand yourself, and so you can adjust the weights. Yeah, and there's some places where they've got them, uh, the weights, like, already in them, and then they, they come at, you know, in the two pound, and three pound, and four pound, and five pound, so you just kind of have to see what you want. And what are you looking for from this drill? What's it, what is it developing? The one thing we, we think it does a great job of just helping kids get awareness of their body in space as they're moving through a turn. Um, by putting that ball into their lead hand, what it does is it just speeds them up just a little bit. And what we like to do is get the kids to the point where they can go back and forth, you know, five or six times continuously. And that takes a while to attain that proficiency. Um, but it just gives them kinesthetic awareness. And uh, it's, it, we're really not using it for pure technique as much as helping them, especially the younger throwers, get used to turning with some speed and mm -hmm. being able to have a feel of where their body is in space. And it's also a rhythm thing too. Um, this is a young Henry doing this, and it's you know not not great. Um, you know, if we had one of the ones like he was doing last year, you would notice a considerable difference with you know how quickly he could do it and go back and forth three or four times. Yeah, and and that's exactly what I have written down. I'm looking for a big thing is just body awareness. Um, a little bit of extra speed. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll actually give a guy, instead of one power ball, we'll give him two power balls to hold on to, and that'll make him go even faster to whip him around. Um, and then the last thing's kind of like some rhythm. And we understand that this is not, you know, a perfect drill. And on one hand, you don't really want, let's see if he does it here. You don't really want to whip that left arm around at the beginning as much as he does in a real throw, probably, mm -hmm. like that. But, you know, not every drill is going to be perfect. This is, you know, that's not really the part we're focusing on trying to do. We're trying to just build a little bit of extra speed. So if the left arm opens up a little bit extra, then that it's just a drill. So um, we got to kind of like make sure we're understanding that the drills that we're doing, you know, we're focusing on those specific few things and not um, pointing out all these other different things that are wrong. Um, because it, at the end of the day, it's just a drill. Um, and then one thing I'll, I'll let you know that is going to happen if this is the first time you try the drill and you're doing the backwards one, your guys are most likely not going to know how to go backwards. So that's why we um, you know, try to draw a backwards seven down the, down the, uh, uh, ring. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this to play. It'll just come off. Yeah. But watch how Henry, um, is going to put that, um, left foot here and then try to reverse leg swing around. So he gets back into that starting position. So he'll step there and then he's got to swing all the way around to there. So he, ends where he starts um, because it's just supposed to be a backwards full spin. Um, so that's kind of like that body awareness kind of thing where, mm -hmm. you know, at first a lot of your guys, even if they're experienced, they might think they know what they're doing, but then you give them this drill and, and maybe they don't actually know where they're supposed to be in the ring. But if you know how to do this, then that really can, can tell you that, you know what you're doing and you know where you're supposed to be at, at what time in the ring. Like some guys add in an extra step or two um, or step to the wrong location. Then that kind of like shows, well, you don't fully understand where you're supposed to be, but if you can figure it out, 
then you're really going to understand how to do it even better. Um, cause you know, a lot of people don't realize that technique is number one. It's in a, to me and I think to Kip, it's, it's a head of strength and it's a head of speed. Um, if you understand the technique better than a guy who can out bench you or squat, then there's a chance that you can throw further than them. So understanding the technique is huge. Um, you guys got a question about this drill. Yeah. Do you do this Nickerson drill regularly? And do you do it with kids that are just learning to spin? Um, yes and yes. Um, we do it more early in the season, but uh, I always like to do it at least once a week. Like maybe Monday becomes your, let's go back to some of the fundamental drills. Um, and just get those back in place. And then you can also, during the week, if you see a kid that's getting a little too deliberate in the ring sometimes, uh, one of the nice things about this drill is young throwers, we really like it with the young throwers because we can just isolate motion and the turn without them worrying about where the throw is. We don't do it in the ring. Actually, most of the time we do it over there in the parking lot where the kids start by straddling one of the white parking stripes and then they can see if their left or their right foot lands on the line which is you know a rough approximation of where you would like it to be and um gives a, them a chance we use it to talk about spotting we try to line them up with one of the fence poles and so they learn how to use their eyes to locate themselves in space but it it helps the kids that are just learning the event and may not even be spinning in the ring yet, just get the feel of moving and not being too deliberate, just be smooth, keep it motion, keep the motion moving, and it improves their balance, improves their body awareness. And we, we virtually never do it in a ring. It's just strictly an out of the ring drill for that limited purpose. Yeah, Ag agreed. You know, we try to do it at least once a week and if, it, if you're new, then hopefully we do it in your first week um, that you're on the team because we just want to, the, the more that you spin, the better you're going to get at spin. So the sooner we can get you doing this drill, even if it's, if you're only getting half of it right, at least you're learning it and you're going to understand how to do it sooner than someone who's not doing it. Um, another thing that I noticed while watching this a million times is, in order to keep that rhythm going, um, this drill's good because watch uh, Sam's right foot when it hits the middle of the ring and how it just keeps turning the, the whole way through without pausing. Just turns all the way around. That's, that's one thing that this will help. So if you notice that you've got a kid who um, has got a little bit of a pause or a hitch in the middle of their throw, then that would be like maybe a good drill to go to to just keep them smooth and keep them turning through. Another what would thing, you guys, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What would okay. you guys recommend using if someone doesn't have a power ball? Can you, can you picture doing this drill with another kind of uh, device? Probably use a small dumbbell, just a couple pound dumbbell, just to have something in your hand. You want that weight out there because it does accelerate you. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe a, maybe if you got a cone, you could do it with a cone. Uh, it's just something mainly to hold on to, I yeah. think. But also you want the weight. So maybe a, a water bottle, maybe half full with water, something like that. Something at least a couple pounds so, that, so the athlete can feel that weight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it, it does, I mean, we've all seen first-year throwers who are very deliberate trying to do everything perfect. And this just takes – that out of it and just gets them moving uh and that that extra weight extended out away from their body uh it's also a, just a, a living physics lesson here where it helps them get that feel and understand what length and, and levers are in the throw you could you picture uh like a bowling pin working for that drill you have a good grip yeah. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. You don't want bowling pins flying around the parking lot, do you? <laughs> now, um, there's a little uh, twist on the drill that we'll do sometimes is, you know, if the kids are 
they want to throw something, we'll sometimes have them throw these. We'll do a progression first with some, you know, half turns and power throws. But uh, what we'll have them do is we'll have them throw the power ball, but we have them start at the front of the ring, go through a backwards spin, and then go through a full spin and throw it. Um, so to do this, you just got to keep the ball in your right hand or your throwing hand, I should say, the whole time. And then you just go through, backwards, twist up, and throw. In this drill, guys, is the focus mainly on foot placement, or do you pay attention to where their shoulders are as well? Don't worry about the shoulders too much, only because you got that, that weight. It's going to distort things a little bit there. Uh, I've come around over the last couple of years to really liking this for the older throwers, your juniors and seniors that have a couple of years of experience. Um, there's something about getting back into that position at the back of the ring, finding that position that just kind of smooths out their one. Yeah. Yeah. I think I like it for, for that specific reason and keeping yourself smooth um keeping things turning not having any pause um that's kind of like the big thing to look for in this all right what's next all right so the next thing we kind of had to do a little uh like kind of shorten this one a little bit because we couldn't get any power or, or half turn throws but you guys could probably imagine what that would be. This would be like, you can't throw outside, you're stuck indoors, you got somewhere where you can like throw onto a wall. We got a nice little wall here. This is, this is our little uh, little space we have in indoors. So- uh, Yeah, we have we, no nets to throw into. Yeah, shout out to all the schools who don't have any place to throw at. We just have a nice wall, which I'm actually okay with. Um, I'll take that rather than not having a wall. Um, and, and the ground's actually a decent surface that we have in this little hallway at Deerfield. Um, so it, it, it ends up working out pretty well. Um, and what he's got in his hand, uh, Nick's got a, one of those like squishy, soft medicine balls. We just call them squishies for fun. Um, and they're, you know, they sell them online, MF Athletic, for like, I, I think they've got 1Ks and 2Ks and 3 pounds and whatever. So different weights. Um, and you know, we don't want the kids to uh, grip it and rip it, but they can if they want to, and the ball won't really damage itself or the wall or the net or whatever you're throwing into. Because, um, you know, it's only going to hit the wall. It's not going to go 150 or whatever feet because you're just working on full spins, half turns, powers, trying to while you're stuck inside, uh, get some kind of, dr of, a, of a throw in for discus. Because, um, you know, we're, we can't even throw outside and, until who knows when. Um, so if you got a space, this is what we like to do. Um, and like I said, we, do, we start out with probably a, a half dozen to a dozen power throws. Um, and then we go into a half dozen to a dozen half turns and then we'll do some fulls at the end um, and there's not really anything specific um, there's there's one thing I'm going to point out but other than that it, it's just you know we're just throwing full spins we're throwing half turns we're throwing powers inside because we haven't thrown disc in three or so months and we want to get ready a little bit for uh, the outdoor season the one thing that I do like to point out during this, because it's easy to point out, is when we do power throws, this is basically the position that you'll be set up in. And we emphasize when we throw these squishies into the wall, we want the disc, or the ball, I should say, being higher than your shoulder. Bad, bad line, bad line. Let's redo that. Um, we want this being higher than the shoulder, right? Um, for, for the orbit purpose. So, it's going to be ideally higher than the shoulder here. And then when you turn, it'll be at a low point. And then once you finish, it'll be back up at the high point. So you got that orbit of it going high to low to high. Um, and that's kind of what we uh, look for for the orbit. 
Um, and that's kind of one of the big things we look for during this. Um, and other than that, you know, it could be any, any number of things for a specific thrower um, of what we look for um, to correct. Um, you know, it could be something at the back of the ring, in the middle of the ring, at the front of the ring. Um, it's kind of like you have to self-diagnose each thrower um, for what they need to work on. Uh, we try to keep it uh, to no reverse throws. Um, yeah. Hey, you know, can I point out real quick, uh, for those of you that are, have, if you have no experience with those balls, one of the great things is that they don't bounce back. You can't really see it on the screen here, but they just hit the wall and then go right to the ground, right, boys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, the only time anything will happen is if you get a kid who releases it early and then, you know, or late and it goes off to the side. But um, we haven't had any problems with it, like hitting anybody or anything. So, yeah, I really like um, one of the things is at Deerfield, we only get to throw indoors three, three days a week at our sister school at Highland Park, who shares their indoor shot facility. But as it turns out, that's really worked to our advantage over the years because on the days we're back at Deerfield, it can only be a technique and lifting day. Um, and one of the nice things I like about this is the kids are learning how to position a body to throw properly and not having to worry about the release of the discus or how far it goes. So the emphasis really is on technique and there's nothing else to emphasize. So it really has a lot of advantages from a teaching standpoint. You can isolate things and the kids are not worried about trying to jack the discus out there or did they have a bad release. You can just focus them on their feet or their shoulders or whatever you want because the ball's only gonna go to that wall so they, they don't know anything else. Yeah, another one more thing that if you have like a line to uh, set yourself up on, I think if you straddle that line, it, it's really nice so that the thrower can be aware of where they are. Because I don't think um, the the uh, custodians would like us to draw backward sevens with chalk on the ground inside our school. Um, so what we look for is if you straddle the line, then ideally the right foot for right-handed thrower would land in, on the line, and then the left foot would pull through to the other side of the line, mm -hmm. um, kind of to make sure you're landing in that backward seven. Um, yeah. Before we had uh, an addition put on with a new gym, uh, we used to do this in a stairwell. Um, you could even do it, we found space and ability to do it even in there in another part of the building um then they hung paintings on the walls <laughs> not that <laughs> so this is a great improvement for us and we said approximately three discus drills are we going more than three here that's right. Uh, we got a little bit more. Um, a couple of bonus drills. A couple of bonus drills. Um, both will involve pole vault pills or, or, excuse me, pole vault poles or something that they can put on their back. Um, but actually, you know, they could, these could be done without a pole vault pole, to be honest. Um, so the first one is uh, like a continuous half turn drill. Um, and you can start a more experienced, inexperienced thrower with uh, just doing like, two or three of these in a row and not even with a pull. Um, and then as they get better and better, maybe just propose to the team, we're gonna have a little challenge. We're gonna see how many you can do before you get off balance and fall over or your feet are not going <laughs> in the right spot. So it's just continuous half turn drill, keeping everything turning for like as long as you can. Um, and that, that's, I think, mainly the, the big thing is, you know, your feet are landing 180 degrees opposite of each other. You're keeping that right foot turning. You're keeping all your weight over that right leg. You're kind of building up um, strength in your ankle and your knee and your quad and your hip and every part of that right leg to keep it strong and turning through that position. So there's Sam doing it. Here we got Henry doing it. 
one of the things we really like this drill for is if, if you ever had, you know, everybody has kids who land in the power position and then their hips keep on going forward to the front of the ring and they really don't get their right leg into the throw. Well, if you keep doing this, if you can go back and forth many times, then you're keeping your weight over that right leg, which will transfer to that part of the throw. Um, in the middle of the ring when you're in power position, you can keep, they learn how to keep the weight back without thinking about it. Yeah, and when we're indoors, we'll do this drill, you know, without a pole vault pole, because we, we don't bring them inside in the hallways. Um, and we'll try to do it at least once a week. Um, mainly the things we've just mentioned, keep the right foot turning, uh, keep the weight over the right leg in the middle, all, always for right-handed throwers we're talking here. Um, and then make sure the upper body is kind of like resisting back and, and holding back um, so that, like we mentioned before, in a full throw, you'd uh, have the legs finish the throw before the upper body. Hey, is there any magic length to the pole? I don't know anything about pole vault poles. Are they all the same or approximately the same length? No, they vary. Um, you know, the... The taller the kid, the easier, you know, they can handle a longer pole. We just go in there and find the most beat up old pole that's at the bottom of the pile. Um, and there's a couple short ones. And then we actually have, I don't even know what it originally was. It's a, it's a metal pole. It's only about four feet long. It looks like it used to be a handle of a broom or a rake. And um, so sometimes with beginners, we'll have them use that and then there's been times when we've actually taken them to uh um to meets that that's a little small one and then kids use it as part of their warm-up uh or between uh prelims and finals they can go over and do a couple drills with it um and it's basically the same drill but just with a shorter pole but it just kind of reminds them of what they want their body to be doing And uh, if you've got a more beginner kid, you could probably just have them put their hands on their hips and, and do it without anything on their back. So the longer the, the pole, the more challenging it's going to be? Yeah. 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 I mean, you really have to – you learn how to use your, your uh, right foot to initiate a turn. Yeah. The, the muscles in the core, the obliques and stuff like that, they're going to – they're going to be given a workout doing this with that pull um, and, and kind of like resisting, keeping it from turning through. So really good for uh, building up the core and uh, getting ready to throw yeah. disc. I think another advantage to it too, and both for shot and rotational shot and disc is, especially for young throwers, it helps them tolerate spinning. It helps their head tolerate spinning, not getting dizzy, knowing where they are in space. We, they can just develop that that ability sooner than if all they than if they simply learned it by throwing in the ring. This gives them a chance to really develop that uh, ability to, to turn their head a lot and keep their balance and know where they're at. Another thing, cues, good cue on this one too is uh, to teach them to have two focal points. You know, one in front, one in back, and that, that's the only place where their eyes, you know, they use their eyes to find out where they are in space, and it helps them keep their balance. Yeah, so his eyes should be looking somewhere back here or somewhere over in here, depending on where he's pulling through to. Kind of like if you're in the ring, you're driving down the sector, you're looking somewhere, maybe the left sector line, when you're driving into the ring. And then when you pull through, you land in power, maybe if for a brief moment, your eyes pass by something um, at the back of the ring. Usually at our, at our place, we, we have a couple poles, a couple signs, that little landmarks that peop, uh, our guys can look at. And then when we go to a meet, we'll uh, try to find those for them if, if that's something that helps them um, during a spin. So. Here's Nick kind of like turning through, keeping his eyes on one of those two locations. Yeah. Yeah, the younger, the, th the less experienced the thrower, I mean, they really don't know what to do with their eyes. It sounds 
a little funny, but they really don't. And then my wife teaches ballet and she of course teaches dancers to pirouette. And I learned this from her. Ready for the last one? We are ready. All right. So again, pole vault pole doesn't have to be done with a pole vault pole, but if you have one and you want to use it, you can. Um, it's called Float Float Sting. I think it's from John Powell. It's from the Powell camp. Powell John camp. Powell. Um, so basically the float, float, float sting, there's like two shuffles. Sometimes kids just do one shuffle and then they do like a half turn. So it's kind of like a, like a South African drill or something like that. Um, can be done with a pole vault pole without a pole vault pole. Um, one of the big things on this is rhythm. I think that's probably like the number one thing that we do the drill for. Um, here's a couple other guys going through. Kind of shuffle yeah. step turn. Yeah, you may be able to see there's a small seam in the uh, asphalt there and they're working down that line. And this is another place where you can teach them how to use their eyes that they can see the far end of the line. They don't need to look straight down so they can keep their heads up in a good position. Um, we do this with power balls also. And the idea of the power ball is to keep it locked back and not let it drift forward. And that, that takes some time to develop. Um, another thing to, to help the rhythm that we look for is to keep the right foot turning, just like almost any other drill. This will kind of like expose some kids, um, like sometimes their right foot's not landing in the right spot. So Henry's landing pretty good. Some kids will have it land and it's pointing like backwards already, which you know we don't really want that to happen. We call that um, backing into the ring. Um, Cause usually what'll happen is it'll kind of flatten out and, and pause and not turn right away. And then also, um, not only does it have to keep turning, but ideally we want that, that right foot pointed in the direction of like the throw or where they're headed. Henry really only gets about halfway around his is pointing towards like the road. So that's one thing that he need to work on um, for this drill. That's one thing I look for to make sure they're keeping the right foot turning. Cause if you can do it with a pole vault pole, then surely you'll probably be able to do it in a, in a throw um in the ring yeah. we used to have two tires and um maintenance crew threw out some of the, the tires we did have but if you do it with two tires that aren't too large and you're doing this drill it's really a great physics lesson for the kids because the tires just float up and they stay up from the rotation and if they stop turning if they let their foot flatten out they'll drop I wish we had video of that because it really is um, instructive to see that. Yeah, just imagine Nick with a tire in this hand and a tire in that hand. Yeah, and they're, the, the tires are flat, they're parallel to the ground. And they just float up. It's also good Where's practice that? if any of your kids have uh, those like linemen uh, things over the summer. We've got some of our football guys have practiced and come over from football to practice for the lineman challenge. Yeah. I got a couple questions here, gents. All right. Yep. One, what's the best drill for accelerating the leg sweep and flipping the hips in the zero support phase? Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go back to Henry's full spin here because he's kind of like doing two drills in one. Um, pretend like he doesn't have the pull. That won't, doesn't really matter. If you, if you really want to work on flipping the hips, I'm not sure about the whole acceleration of the right leg, but for definitely for flipping the hips, the drill that we'll do, it can be done in a full spin or it can be done in a half turn. The, the half turn version is a thrower will just hold the right knee up, and then you're gonna to try to get your feet to land almost simultaneously. So we wanna get that right foot to land, um, and then the left foot lands like right after um, 
the right foot lands. So he kind of does it pretty good here. It, it gets worse when you look at it in slow-mo, but he gets them to hit pretty close to the same time. But if you want that to happen, if you want those feet to land, that left foot to land sooner, then you're going to have to um, – you're going to have to flip those hips. You're going to have that's to really the starting position right there. I think yeah, literally, that position. yeah, literally this is the starting position. Um, if you were to do the half turn version instead of the full, full spin version of the drill, we call them a flamingo. Um, if you check out our um, Instagram, throw right far happens on one of our old stories that we saved in like that archive or whatever. Um, it's got, it's got the flamingo drill on there. Um, is one of the videos and you can watch that um something you can do with and and we usually do with no implement we don't do it with anything usually um so you don't have to have a pull vault pull to do it or whatever um yeah another question when or how do you determine when a thrower should include a reverse at the end of their throw <laughs> tough question um, <laughs> that's why you guys get paid the big money yeah, yeah. I think um, for most throwers that we've had, it just kind of comes naturally. And like, I was just looking back at some video because, you know, I've got nothing else better to do with my time right now. Um, and I was noticing Nick, um, my senior this year, he started reversing, I think, his sophomore year. Um, and I, I have no idea when it actually started happening. Uh, I don't know if it was after his freshman year in the summer or at the beginning of sophomore. I don't even know. Um, but so he got it started reversing early and maybe he was just kind of like ready to do it and his body just did it. Like I, I until this year, I've never like tried to get a kid to really like do any reversing. I've got a senior this year that we're trying, we've tested out, experimented with reversing. And, and it's like one of the first times that I've been like, okay, like let's actually like practice the reverse. And this is how your foot move. And it just doesn't really work out for all kids. And some kids are maybe in a, in a very rare situation, better off non-reversing more so in disc. Um, but it just like, it, it never has worked out in the like the one or two times I've ever tried um, getting a kid to practice the reverse. Uh, the only time it's ever worked out is it just kind of naturally happens. I know it's like the worst answer you could probably give. Um, it, it seems to me that if, if everything leading up to the release is in proper position and the forces are right, generally a kid that has any kind of athleticism will be able to reverse if they need to. Um, we've only had a couple kids over the years where we really had to work on it. Um, and like last year with Henry, he probably did more non-reverse throws in practice. And, you know, he was, he was better off not reversing. And Sam, I don't, um, you know. Yeah. I I'd say once you get a kid that is reversing, just make sure they're not reversing on every single throw they take. Um, we used to do that, but I think we've improved a lot since we started doing non-reverse throws. Like almost virtually all of our stand throws, power throws, half turn throws are gonna be no reverse throws. And then ideally the, the first half or a couple at least of your full spins, you're doing no reverse throws. and and like we've said before, it kind of like exposes any problems or fixes any problems. It, it makes them go a little slower and make sure everything's in the right position. Um, so no reverse can be good, um, but, but getting a kid, figuring out when they're ready to reverse is just, it's, it's a tough thing because it's different for every kid, different for their body um, and, and how experienced they are. But I would definitely agree with Kip that, um, if their technique is sound, then there's a better chance that they are ready to reverse than a kid who's got technique that's all over the place. Yeah, you know, I found early in, in when I first started working with the throwers was the more I tried to teach reversing, the worse off the kid was because they got to the point that they were worried about releasing as they were going 
or uh, reversing as they were going into the release that was distorting other things. And um, so I just kind of evolved into um, focusing on that release and then you know, basically just look for the back of the ring and let your body come on around if it, if it wants to. Well, the reverse is kind of like falling in love. It just has to happen sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Hey, um, <laughs> hey, quick question going back to your references to, to uh, tires in the float float sting. Mm -hmm. yeah. What kind of tires were you talking about? Car tires. They're pretty, you know, um, we used to have two from, you know, bigger wheels and a couple from smaller wheels and girls were actually able to do it with the smaller ones and the other thing we like tires for too is for shot uh, to teach kids to to use their legs in the throw um, to hold a, a good size tire you know good size being relative to their their build you know with straight arms over their head and do a full turn and you know release the tire so that you know it's since the arms are locked on top of their head holding the tire it's got to be all leg the tires only going to go a few feet but they get the feel of using uh their legs to create a throw so that's another way you can use a tire well another question uh could you give us the name of your instagram site again so they can find the flamingo drill yeah, so it's uh, no spaces, no capitals. Uh, it's just throw right, far happens. All right, and mm -hmm. then uh, we've got one more little bonus bonus drill. That, what, uh, a bonus bonus drill? Yes, but we don't have video on it, so we're just going to have to explain it. Um, <laughs> we'll have so, to use our imaginations. Yeah, so um, this bonus bonus drill is when we get outside to actually throw disc, um, whenever that may be, um, what we'll do is we'll give, um, for like a male thrower, we'll give them a, could be a 1K, a 1.5K, a 2K, a 1.6. If you've got a 1.75, you could throw that in there. Yeah. Maybe even a 2.5K if you've got that. Yeah. Any combination of those, try to get at least four, if possible, four different weighted discs. We'll have them place it, they can put the discs over the back of the ring. They can put them over here, up in the front, wherever they want to place them. But they get to pick which disc they want to use, and they're going to do a power throw, a half turn, a south, mm -hmm. and a full spin. So they could save their 1K for their power throw, or they can save it for their full spin. But... We've got a couple different um, like uh, stipulations on what needs to happen. One, all four of the discs need to land in sector. And then two, they've got to complete the series in less than I think like 30 seconds or so. Mm -hmm. So they don't have like much time. They throw, they pick up the next disc, they, they got to throw right away or else they won't get it done in 30 seconds. And then if one of those things doesn't happen, like let's say they throw a sector foul, then that means they got to go and they got to run around the whole discus field. Yeah, it's it's a great deal. One of the nice things about it is it's fun. The, you know, you get five or six guys that are doing it and they're cheering for each other, trying to distract each other. Um, but it's a great way to break up practice a little bit. But kinesthetically, you know, a couple of things, they got to know, they've got to think about what they're doing. We're not telling them which disc to throw when. And, you know, they've got a, a two five in their hands and they're trying to do a full with and they can't get in sector. They got to figure that out. We're not going to tell them that. Um, but it also makes them more aware because they have different weights in their hand, different sizes in their hand. You know, they've got to make sure their technique is right because if it isn't, it's going to go out of sector. Yeah. Gents, we have a request for an additional bonus drill. Like if we've got another one to throw at you? Well, here it's a request. Do you have a drill for the block? Hmm. Not really. Um, I don't think we do a drill for the block. I think it's just something that we 
um, like talk about, we cue. Um, we, we, or at least I like to have now, over the last couple of years, a little bit of a longer of a block in, um, in discus, a little bit longer of an arm blocking in disc um, than in shot. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the one we use, I mean, there's the, the one that you use where, um, and I even think with Source it does this in one of his, um, his early videos where you have the kids standing uh, square to the direction they're throwing. Um, they have the ball, the shot on their, on their neck and they have the left arm out and, you know, they just pull in and release. Um, and I mean, it's really early in the season where we, probably talk about the block the most um, is with shot. We really don't have, I mean, our motto kind of is, uh, you know, good throws are built from the ground up. So you'll notice a lot of our drills are really based on that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think most of the things that we do with the block is we just kind of talk about it and then um, maybe focus on it on a couple little drills at the beginning of the year where it's just like you're pretending to throw power in the hallway. And then when you, like Gasper said, when you, when you throw with your right hand, then you pretend to block with your left arm. And then ideally it's not like a, a thing that'll like turn your body backwards, but it'll, it'll just be like uh, your left arm stopping that whole left side and just freezing everything. Um, yeah, not so not yeah, not a lot of drills that we do for the block. I feel like the block kind of naturally develops from all those fixed feet throws. Yeah, yeah, probably yeah, probably the no reverse throws yeah. that we'll do. Uh we yeah, those will, those are definitely big for the block. Yeah, one thing is with some kids when we start trying to emphasize block too much, they you know, they're coming through to um out of power to deliver uh, the implement and then they start throwing that left arm back way too soon they throw that shoulder back so if anything that uh, we'll do once in a while is we'll have them throw from a power position and just kind of hold the palm of my uh, hand up kind of behind their left shoulder blade so if they're pulling back too far and over rotating away from the direction of the throw too much that they just feel the hand there and they're aware of it um, but drill wise, no, we really don't do too much. Yeah. In fact, we'd like to hear some some ideas if anybody out there has them. I know that in my case, I've there's never been an instance where I've talked about the left arm, you know, from the power position where I didn't regret it. Because they do exactly what you just described, where if you try to talk about blocking, you know, stopping that using that left arm to stop the shoulders, they immediately they start blocking in the middle of the throw. Right, as soon as their foot lands in the middle of the ring, they start clutching their left arm. Exactly. And I have to try to get them to forget about it. Yeah, yeah. Like if that left foot is not properly great. and they get up on that post leg, the block kind of happens. Right. Um, I don't, if you got something else, let me know while we're at it. I figured since people probably are going to be sitting at home for the next couple of weeks, um, if you go and Google throw right far happens, um, you can get our Instagram, you can get our um, YouTube. Um, what, let's see if I can get this to actually work. I'll just go here. Um, on our YouTube, we've got uh, specifically for this discus analysis. Um, so we just made this four months ago, discus analysis. We've got a shot put analysis 3.0 that Sam Leokomotovich himself made um, at, after last season. So I'd re definitely check those out. They've got some uh, good little cues to look for during the throw. Um, those those maybe would be helpful for uh, people to look at. And then, and then like we said, um, on the Instagram, we've got... I think it's somewhere right here. No, technique, I gotta go back. These technique, we've got the, here's the flamingo drill. I just realized I could pull this up for everybody. Um, so that was the flamingo drill, just stationary, doing that. There's our Nickersons. Um, 
We've got more 360s and the full spins. So you can check all these out. Uh, yeah, so check those out um, if you want to sometime. Anything yeah. else you got? Any more questions? That's it. I really, really appreciate it, gents. It's, uh, it lifts the spirits to spend an hour talking to guys like you about, about this sport we love. And um, we all just have to keep our fingers crossed and hope we get back out there with our kids soon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like uh, we were saying beforehand, our, our kids, you know, at least if you've had an indoor season and had a chance to do the drills, um, they can do drill work. Uh, they can hopefully find a place to lift or to do body weight lifting or workouts. But uh, if they have the drills in place, you know, this is stuff you can do at home even. You can do it in, in your garage, most of it. Um, and so, you know, a motivated kid, if we can get the kids just to keep doing the drills over time, uh, they'll, they'll improve. And uh, to the, everybody out there listening, I'll put this on YouTube within a day or so. Um, I'll tweet out the link or uh, check out uh, McThrows.com, our website. But we'll get that out there in case you want to share it with your athletes. And again, um, Cody and Kip, thank you very much. Fantastic job. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. All right. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you again soon.